Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about entity managers and command buffers. So in dots, we have a concept called structural changes. And these changes only can happen on the main thread, creating or destroying entities, adding or removing components, setting a shared component value, are all structural changes. So in order to do any of these changes, we need an entity manager. So every world in our project has an entity manager. You don't need to worry about concept of worlds for now. Usually when you're not dealing with networking, then you just have a default world and you're going to work with that. So in every world, you have an entity manager and using that entity manager, you can make structural changes. So let's do an example. Here I've created a script, name it prefabs manager. It's just a mono behavior with a game object as a prefab, also a component data name it prefabs data it has an entity and inside the baker i basically convert this game object prefab to an entity prefab and now if i go to the editor and create a sub scene let's do that here in the sub scene i can create a empty game object name it prefab manager and attach prefabs manager let's also create a prefab of type cube so that is going to be my prefab and I can assign the prefab here and delete that so let's say we want to instantiate this prefab and by doing that we're going to create an entity so it's a structural change so in order to do that we need to access the entity manager so in the scripts I've already created a spawner system it's a system based because as I mentioned structural changes happen in the main thread so I'm just going to use a system base and let's say whenever I press space I want to instantiate a prefab so first I'm gonna get the singleton of my prefabs so in order to access the entity manager you can say world dot default game object injection world dot entity manager or you could just use world dot entity manager or you could just use entity manager they all the same thing but if you have multiple world you might want to use the specific world that you want Right now, as I mentioned, we don't need to worry about the worlds. We have only one. So for now, let's just use entity manager and let's say dot. Now we can access multiple methods within the entity manager, like creating entity or instantiate entity. So let's do that. I'm going to instantiate an entity by passing the prefab. Now, if we go back to the editor, and if I play this, and if I press a space, it's going to instantiate it for us. If we go back, so as I mentioned before, creating entities is a structural change. So whenever you make a change like that using the entity manager, you're going to create a sync point. So basically, sync point is a point in the program execution that waits for the completion of all jobs that has been scheduled so far and you need to avoid sync points as much as you can so if we go back to the script and let's say we want to instantiate multiple prefabs in order to do that we are going to do something like this we can also put it in a for loop but i want you to see it line by line so right now we have seven prefabs being instantiated which means we have seven sync points so according to the documentation we need to avoid this sync point so the less sync points you have is better so this is where we're going to use command buffer. So basically, command buffer is going to record all of your commands, for example, instantiating a prefab, and then it's going to execute them at once. So instead of creating seven sync points, you could create one sync points using a command buffer. We can simply go ahead and say command buffer equals to new entity command buffer. And instead of using the entity manager directly, we're going to use the command buffer instead. So we're going to replace it with the command buffer. And at the end, we're going to call command buffer playback and we can pass the entity manager. We're also going to dispose the command buffer. So right now we only have one sync point and we're doing the exactly the same task. So this is how you are going to use the command buffer and we can defer changes to entities by recording commands into an entity command buffer. The recorded commands are executed later when we call playback on the main thread. So here we created our own command buffer, but there are some default command buffers that we also could use. So if we go and take a look at our Unity editor, if I play the project and if I go to the 
entities systems you can see that in our default world there's a bunch of systems there are three groups by default in our project the initialization system group the simulation system group and presentation system group so each one of these system groups have two command buffers for example if you take a look at the initialization you see that there is a begin initialization entity command buffer system and end initialization entity command buffer system so instead of creating a new sync point we could use these sync points and execute our structural changes there's also the same thing here in the simulation system group begin simulation entity command buffer and end simulation entity command buffer so in order to access those command buffers let's go back to our script and here let's create a variable inside our system let's say private and notice when i type begin there's a bunch of options for me for example begin initialization entity command buffer or simulation and when i type end there's a bunch of entity command buffer systems here so let's say we want to instantiate our prefabs inside the end simulation entity command buffer system so i'm going to get a reference to that and inside on create i am going to say this variable equals to world get existing system managed so we're going to access the system that already exists and we're going to pass end simulation entity command buffer system so we're going to put it in that variable now we can access it anytime we want in the update so here instead of creating a new entity command buffer we can go ahead and say command buffer equals to end simulation entity command buffer system dot create command buffer and also make sure to remove this pose and playback because those methods are going to be called automatically using that system so we don't need to call it we only call those methods when we create a new command buffer ourselves so let's also put them on a random position in order to do that we need to access the entity we instantiating so entity equals to that and i'm going to change the local transform put it on a random position and we can do the same thing for the other entities we instantiate first we need to assign a variable and after that we can go ahead and place every one of them in a random position and because it's in the end simulation system group it's not gonna create an additional sync point for us it's just gonna use that one and play back all the recorded changes now if I go ahead and start the project and if I hit a space you see that the cubes are going to be instantiated for me and every time I hit a space there are going to be more cubes so that's basically how you're going to use entity manager and command buffers I hope you find this video useful please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching